Welcome back to the channel. Recently, comic book writer Mark Waite's complete lack of self-awareness was on breathtaking display in a recent Facebook post about comic books clearly throwing shade at Aaron Lepresti, Dale Keogh, Chuck Dixon, Shane Davis, and others, and he makes a complete clown out of himself. And here talking about that is Aaron Sparrow. How you doing, Aaron? I'm doing well. I've I've worked with Mark, so I've got some uh, I've got some insight into uh, into him. He says some very interesting things. I'm going to take some of the the dumbest stuff he says, the most hypocritical things that he says, and we'll talk about that. First up, he says, as in any industry, creative or otherwise, there is ageism in the comic industry. No matter your skill, no one gets to stay new, hot fan favorite eternally, and there's the natural assumption among editors and fans, right or wrong, that no one can keep consistently hitting homers forever. The creators who are most punished by this, to me, seem to be the ones whose style, however lauded or commercial in the past, has become so locked and predictable that it doesn't seem as fresh and attractive to readers and editors as it once did. Who does Mark Wade think he is? The reason people are lauding Batman, Superman, World's Finest is because it feels like it's from the 90s. Yes, yes, that's absolutely true. Uh, he's uh, he's actually like doing kind of like a throwback book and and much better than uh, some of his current work that we've seen, you know, like on Captain America and things like that, where he was just going, you know, nuts with the kind of the modern take and the modern, uh, you know, Trump derangement syndrome worked into the book and, and whatnot. He's just gone back to basics and it's working. Not to mention he had not had a hit comic book series in like 10 years before going back to DC Comics. It's not like the people working at DC would have been like, well, Mark Wade's really hot where he had a really hot series two years ago. He hadn't had anything really hit in so long, yet he's sitting there kind of talking crap about people that aren't getting work. What exactly has Robert Venditti or Walt Simonson or Peter J. Tomasi or Dan Jurgens done to not change? They certainly have, have changed more than Mark Wade has over the years, but they're not getting work. And it feels like Mark Wade's kind of throwing shade at them as well as other people. Yeah, I think it's unintentional, but I, I, you know, you do have to lump them in with uh, the people that he's he's kind of addressing because they're not getting the work, and they have not, you know, they've turned in consistently good work. I would say that they've turned in more consistent work than Mark has in the last uh, the last five ten years. So, uh, you know, it just seems kind of uh, just seems kind of out of out of place for him to be making making this statement. If, for example, uh, you know, you want to talk about like kind of being out of your out of your element and, and writing something that you're not suited to. Uh, let's talk about champions. You know, where Mark Wade had to write teenagers i don't reading that book i don't think mark was ever a teenager uh i think he was born in his 40s you know <laughs> like uh <laughs> that book was awful um and you know maybe it, it's just one of those assignments he was handed that he had no passion for you know that certainly happens uh or maybe he was going through a rough time or you know we don't know but you know the, the quality of the work was not there so i mean that that should have disqualified him any more than uh you know more than dan jurgens has done anything that uh, would take him out of uh or Peter J. Tomasi did Super Suds. That was a great book for all ages comic book readers. That was Something a hit. Mark yeah. Wade hasn't done recently. Mm -hmm. I, what, what are the numbers on Superman Batman right now? I know it's popular. Yeah, I know people are liking top it. Top twenty. Is it? Yeah. Good. So good for Mark. Good for Mark. He's gone back to basics. Yeah, he's going back and doing an old school comic book that people are loving because he hasn't adapted to the times and it's not decompressed storytelling and it's not deconstructing the heroes. It's going back to who they are and telling a good story. But he claims he's like changing with the times. Absolutely ridiculous for Mark Wade to make that claim, specifically with his current hit comic books that he has with DC. He also goes on to talk about the people that are succeeding right now or succeed and have longevity in comic books. He says, they never stop striving to learn and to better their skills. They don't buy into their own status or think it somehow absolves them from meeting deadlines, being fun to work with, or being professional. This is Mark Franken Wade we're talking about here. The man is known for throwing hissy fits in his office back in the day, throwing shade at his bosses, his co-workers, and he literally huffs his own parts for breakfast every day. When Mark is his best self, he is a really great guy. Uh, he's generous. He's magnanimous. Uh, you know, he can be really spectacular to work with. He can be really spectacular to work for. Unfortunately, I think Mark, you know, and I, I'm not trying to be like a, I'm not a psychiatrist or anything here, but I think Mark suffers from mood swings. I think there might be, you know, obviously there's anger management issues that he's got to deal with and things like that. And, you know, so there's certain personality flaws that he has. And we all have them. I'm not uh, I'm not judging that. But, it, you know, he has a tendency to kind of like go off the rails and, and do some really awful things, too. So Mark can be a really terrible person to work with and work for. So, you know, for him to kind of take this elder statesman, uh, you know, like he's going to 
coming like Moses coming down from the mountain to tell us what's what. I, I think it's going to come off as hypocritical because of, you know, the behavior that he's had in the past. And if he had caveats in there saying like, look, I haven't always lived up to this either. I think this would be a lot uh, easier pill to swallow. Well, especially the reason he wasn't at DC Comics, it wasn't because he was just Marvel exclusive. He was blacklisted by Bob Harris and I think Paul Levitz. Like, this dude was literally blacklisted from DC Comics for like a decade. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. So, yeah, I think what you're seeing here is a rebranding. You know, he went through the lawsuit with Richard Meyer. That cost him a ton of money. Uh, it embarrassed him. It humiliated him in the uh, in the public sphere. And, you know, largely he, he stayed off of Twitter. Uh, he's just stayed like on his on his little Facebook page. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, it, it hit him in the pocketbook. And so for the first time he had to kind of go, you know, oh, you know, this, this behavior is actually costing me money. And that was kind of a wake up call. So I think he's trying to rebrand himself, you know, both with Batman, Superman, by just writing a, you know, uh, straight superhero story, just right down the middle. And uh, I think he's trying to do it on Facebook. Unfortunately, the internet never forgets. Well, no, Rob Liefeld called him out immediately. And it did feel like he was throwing shade at Rob Liefeld as well. He's like, this dude is a known writer. Why are we even listening to him at this point? Yeah, no, I didn't see that from Rob. Yeah, Rob doesn't pull any punches, does he? He just goes with the throat. He, he, he gives zero bucks. <laughs> no, it's like, why is this guy trying to throw shade on anybody? He was literally blacklisted from DC Comics. Rob Liefeld has been in litigation with Marvel, I think, two or three times, and they always bring him back because he sells comic books. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's an interesting thing. And, you know, Mark used to sell comic books, but I think he turned off a lot of the audience. Now he's, he's slowly, like, gaining them back. You know, people may still have issue with him as a person, but, you know, the comic industry uh, is not forgiving, but the comic fans are very forgiving. And if you deliver a good product, they'll come in and they'll ignore a lot of things that, you know, maybe you've said or done in the past, you know, and they're willing to, uh, they're willing to overlook it because you're going to give them what they want, what they're here for, which is solid stories. You say the comic book industry isn't all that forgiving, but he takes a different approach. I thought this was almost undefensible. One of the most common ones in recent years has been, I'm blackballed for my politics. This is, not to put too fine a point on it, bullshit. I promise you that so long as you're not publicly racist or hateful or dishonest or a poster child for the Me Too movement, so long as you're not actively toxic or unprofessional, regardless of your political affiliation, in other words, so long as you act like a normal human being, your personal life and how you conduct it rarely, if ever, has any bearing whatsoever on your high ability. I've heard far too many stories over the past few years and seen creators that are far too successful outside of DC and Marvel to believe this for an absolute second, not to mention that he is known to be toxic and completely unprofessional, yet continuously gets changes at DC and Marvel, despite throwing all of his politics and Trump into his comic books. Uh, you know, his politics are what, uh, you know, uh, largely what uh, gets him forgiven again and again, because he matches the far left politics of the majority of the industry right now. Uh, I know that people get blacklisted for, you know, wrong think and for not uh, not being on the right side of the political spectrum. We saw uh, we saw one of Marvel's editors. Um, I can't remember her name at the moment. But, uh, you know, during the election, come out and say, you know, we will, you know, we'll remember who. A lot, yeah, Alana Smith came out and said, we'll remember who voted for Trump, you know, like which was a very not veiled threat to conservatives in the industry or people that were voting for Trump. Uh, you know, I've, I've worked with people. I, I had an editor once say to me that the, it, although they liked uh, Chuck Dixon's work, they would never hire him because uh, when he wrote an issue uh, of Robin or wrote some issues of Robin where Stephanie Brown was pregnant, she decided to give the baby up for adoption instead of getting an abortion. That was the whole basis for not hiring Chuck Dixon, even though Chuck Dixon was a great writer in this editor's estimation. So, you know, there's definitely a blackballing of politics and of, of personal beliefs that go on in the industry. And since Mark is protected, he gets to pretend that it's not, but there very much is. Yeah, it's crazy the the lack of self-awareness on Mark. He's like, well, as long as you're, you're professional and you, you don't, and you're not toxic, like you were literally sitting in your office on the ground, screaming, kicking your legs like a baby. How is that not toxic? Yet other people out there, they just go out there and support a presidential candidate and all of a sudden they can't get hired. Now, I realize this is, you know, quite a while ago and, you know, and, and I think everybody should get a chance to, you know, come back and, and write past behaviors and, and atone for them. But, you know, when Mark worked at CrossGen, apparently the day he left, he went into his office and he punched a hole in the wall and then he broke all his toys and threw some stuff around and left and then sent the head of CrossGen. Uh, I think it was uh, Mark Alessi was the uh, owner of CrossGen. Mm -hmm. When the company folded, sent him uh, a bouquet of black roses with, uh, you know, what would your wife think of you now? You know, referencing Mark Alessi's uh, 
dead wife. That's horrible behavior. That's, you know, I can't even imagine doing that to somebody, no matter how much I disliked him. And there's plenty of people in the industry that, you know, I don't have a great feeling about because of things that have, you know, happened between us. But I would never do something like that to them. I would never like write to them and, and reference their dead spouse and, you know, try and like twist the knife because their company failed. The fact that he was blacklisted, we know he was blacklisted. He could not work at DC Comics because his behavior was toxic and it was unprofessional. Yet he was invited back to the table because he had the right politics. It all just smells of hypocrisy on the part of Mark Wade, and it does not surprise me whatsoever. His his Batman Superman World's Finest is absolutely fantastic, but he's still a POS. Uh, you know, he's he's a great writer when uh, when he's focused and when he wants to be. Uh, you know, like I said, when he's his, when he's his best self, I think that Mark can be a really great guy. You know, I would like to. Yeah, I certainly don't have uh, anything against him. You know, I've got I got a night letter from him once. Uh, you know, where he was like, "I'm very disappointed in you." You know, that you're a Comics Gate apologist, and I was like, "How am I a Comics Gate apologist? I'm not even part of Comics Gate. Uh, I just happen to have the same view that you know you need to take care of the customer, and that the customer comes first, and that you know that's who you're supposed to be serving." Uh, but I got that, that letter from him, and I wrote him a really long response. Never heard back. Uh, so yeah, I'm sure that uh, sure Mark doesn't have a very good opinion of me, but you know, as far as I'm concerned. I've seen the best of him. I just wish that he would be that best self more often and would strive to, you know, he, he loves writing Superman. I would love to see a world where Mark tries to be more like Superman. When we found out Mark Wade was returning to DC Comics, I had some questions to ask myself. Could I support Mark Wade writing Superman, Batman, or anything at DC Comics, despite all of his terrible behavior at the time? I talked about it in the video. This was me thinking out loud whether or not I could actually support Mark Wade returning to DC. Definitely check this one out. And my thoughts on Mark Wade, if you don't see it there, there's a link in the video description.